So welcome all of you again to our webinar. Uh, I am Girija and I'm a part of Academic Solution team. And, and as all right, Vardhana, as all of you know, Vardhana is non-banking finance company who works in education field. Uh, Vardhana provides support to schools and students by providing loan to them based on their requirement. And Vardhana also provides academic support and in this regard we have started conducting webinars for the schools and the students to upgrade their skill and knowledge and uh, uh, we have conducted webinar on various topics like goal settings mental well-being student uh, school leader uh, school leader leader uh, school leader leadership and skill uh, how to enhance your skill through the language and in this continuation, our today's topic is how to build equitable and inclusive classroom. Uh, I would like to highlight one thing here. So this is the first part of our webinar uh, of this talk. Uh, of this topic and in this webinar we will be mainly focusing on the uh, getting more knowledge basic knowledge and it is more related to the creating the awareness and we'll talk about the general uh, strategies here and if you like to know more about it so we can have this webinar with expert uh, who is expert in this field and we can together deep dive into uh, in this topic to understand more about it so uh, before I move ahead with the topic, let's. Um, I would like to say two things here. Once we will be providing the participation certificate. For that, we will be sharing a feedback form at the end of the webinar. So please attend full webinar and you will uh, fill the form with correct information so you can get your participation certificate. Let's move ahead with our today's topic and see uh, today's agenda quickly. So we'll start with the introduction and session objective. Uh, then we'll talk about the inclusive education and its model. Then we'll see the types of uh, students in inclusive classroom. Then we'll see steps to create inclusive classroom. And then we'll talk about Vatna program and close the webinar with feedback. Uh, before I start and move ahead to this topic, I would like to know our participants' profile. And for that, I'm releasing a poll. And I have request to all of you, please participate in, uh, in this. I have just released a poll so you can see uh, that poll on your screen. So I have request to all of you please start. Please cast your vote. Okay, so uh, today we have with us uh, teachers and then school principals and leaders, school coordinators and third party solution provided and people from other professions as well. I welcome all of you to again to our webinar and I hope this webinar will be fruitful for all of us. Let's move ahead with our today's uh, webinar and see the uh, session objective very quickly. So we'll be covering two things in today uh, in today's session. So we'll uh, uh, first we'll need to understand inclusive education and then spot it, and to explore various strategies to create inclusive classrooms. Uh, let's first as our top today's topic is how to build equitable and inclusive schools. Let's try first try to understand what is inclusive education and why it is important. So we uh, all know like uh, our national education policy has launched in 2022 uh, with the motive to transform affordable education and anything specially and mainly focusing on the inclusive education and build school in a way. So uh, as per the NEP, uh, inclusive education is like student with and without a disability get equal access and opportunities to learn together. Also, the teaching and learning processes should be in a way to meet the learning needs of the students uh, uh, with different types of uh, disabilities. It means all students in the same classroom in the same schools. So now uh, let's understand why NEP is focusing so much on this inclusive education and why it is important to have inclusive education. So as we all know, education is process where every stakeholders place it's in a role. So make it more effective and successful. And inclusive education, uh, inclusive education has uh, one of the way to achieve that. Inclusive education just not only benefit the students, it has a benefit to other stakeholders as well. 
so let's try to understand so first if the students who have the different disabilities and a part of the inclusive classroom it definitely you know uh, they have a better academic and vocational uh, outcome they get this sense of belonging and they also see they're also part of this society uh it has impact on the other uh, students as well it will help them to improve their behavior uh, they generate more this empathy and sympathy toward the different kind of people. It increases the awareness in them and they start valuing the diversity and accepting that diversity. And for teachers, definitely teachers will start knowing students more and their needs. So the quality uh, so it will have the higher quality of engagement with students and when the st uh, teachers are engaging in a more fruitful way so definitely it increase their confidence and they will be satisfied with their uh, profession and for families and the communities uh, if they are also part of this inclusive education it will definitely break down the discrimination happening within the society and the different beliefs uh, around this and it will automatically uh, increase the involvement of the student in the uh, class rooms and in the schools as well. Uh, now we have talked about uh, the inclusive education and why it is important. Let's move ahead and uh, talk about the type of student uh, in inclusive classroom. Before I talk about it, I would like to know from all of you, uh, what do you think it is important to have an inclusive classroom? What is the main component and main part of the inclusive classroom? Uh, you can use a Q&A for this and if you want to speak, uh, you can raise your hand as well. Uh, I will again repeat uh, my question to like, what do you think like it is a, very important to have for uh, important to have for this inclusive classroom or what is the main component of the inclusive when we are thinking to make this inclusive classroom? Yes, okay. Thank you, Manjulata. Um, helps in building a more compassionate society. Thank you, Shishi. Okay, so we got few uh, answers. Definitely, uh, this is all like all are part of the inclusive education. It should have more access. It should like building a more compassionate society, build a more compassionate society. But when we are talking about the inclusive education, that is very important to have the students, different kind of students in our classroom, which makes our classrooms more inclusive. So uh, we have, when we talk about the inclusive classroom, there are different kind of uh, students who are a part of this inclusive classroom. So we'll have the uh, students from different gender, it can be male, female, even the third gender is also part of the inclusive classroom. Then we have the students from the uh, social economical back, uh, backgrounds. Then we have the students from different caste and class, they are learning together. And then we have the students who have this physical disabilities and even, even those students who have the learning disabilities. Even the students who speak different kind of languages are also the part of the inclusive uh, classroom. So all these kind of students you will find in your class, in your inclusive classroom, and they will be part of it. So as an educator, as a teacher, and for us, it is very important to understand them first to make our uh, inclusive classroom. And generally, uh, generally we, uh, as a teacher, uh, we sometimes struggle to uh, understand this and find uh, challengeful this. It is very easy if you... Uh, students are very easy to identify like if you have a student from different gender if you have a student from different caste in class and if you have a student from a uh, different uh, physical disability someone is blind someone is deaf it's very easy and quick to understand them the most struggling part for uh, us as a teacher or educator is understanding the learning disabilities so uh, I assume you, many of you have seen this Tari Zameen film. And in Tari Zameen, uh, in that Tari Zameen movie, they are especially focusing on this learning disability. And it was showing like teachers are especially struggling to understand this learning disability in a student because that student, Ishan, he was completely looked frightened from outside, but teachers were not able to understand what it's like bothering what kind of issue he is having. So as a teacher, it's very important for us to understand that as well. And our today's session will be mainly focusing on the types of learning disabilities and what we can do towards it. Uh, let's move ahead uh, with our uh, today's session. And uh, I would like to know now we have talked about like 
you know learning disability uh, disability something as an educator we need to pay attention on so i would like to know from all of you if you know any kind of learning disability in you as students are suffering with and you have uh, uh, heard the name of it or are you aware of any kind of uh, learning disabilities so you can use q and a box as a q and a box if you want to speak you can raise your hand as well uh, Shishi ma'am, I have given you permission to speak. Uh, you have to unmute yourself and you can speak. Uh, Shishi ma'am, can you hear me? Uh, I have given you permission to speak. If you want to speak, you can see that mic option on your, on your screen. You have to unmute it and then you can speak. Okay, maybe oh, we'll come back to Shashi ma'am later. Then, Ashima ji, I have given you permission to speak. If you want to speak, please unmute your, uh, yourself. You can see this mic option on your screen. You can unmute and speak. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. No question. Okay, no questions. Though. Dyslexia, autism, orthopedic. Yeah. Reading disabilities, yes. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are able. Sir. Okay, ma'am. Uh, the point is that I belong to a rural section from Maharashtra, Ahmadpur district, Latur. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, most of the time uh, during my rural sector uh, area, most of the students are suffering that uh, they are not understanding basically the difference between. Uh, Marathi, Hindi and English means they are having some kind of problem uh, understanding the languages. Mm -hmm. okay, most, okay. most of the students, uh, they are in the CBC. My school is a CBC school. Yes. So most of the students, they are having a problem related with how to understood what teacher is teaching in English language, but they are not understanding properly. Okay. Okay, that's maybe they are facing issues as we are seeing. They are facing uh, issues with this understanding the language. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, uh, and we have another uh, response of dyslexia, autism, orthopedic, uh, reading disability, memory disorder, slow learner, low vision, blindness, multiple disability. Yes, you all are correct. All these are part of the, uh, all these are learning disabilities. Thank you all for your. Uh, sharing your thoughts. Let's move ahead and see in detail what these uh, different uh, learning disabilities we we see in the students. So, uh, first learning disability, uh, like we'll talk about the dyslexia. Even in that movie, Tare is a main pain. They are mainly focusing on this dyslexia and the students going through that dyslexia. So, dyslexia is students is finding difficult in reading and identifying, especially the speech sounds and the words of it. And as per the research, 10% of school age children have and may ask, uh, may have suffering uh, with this dyslexia. And you will see students in your classroom who are getting confused between similar words. So if you have seen movie, in the, even in that movie, the kid was getting confused between P and Q because they both look very similar. And uh, the, it was difficult to pronounce uh, words for them because they are not able to understand sounds and letters. Another uh, disability we have this dyscalculia. Dyscalculia is like students find it difficult in understanding the number based information and especially like related to, related to maths. As per the research, six percent of school age children have dyslexia. Dyscalculia. Uh, you will find students in your uh, classroom you know, struggling in basic maths facts. They are not able to do the counting, backward counting, table, even the multiplications. Uh, then another disability we have this visual motor deficit and uh, it is students uh, difficult for them to interpreting and organizing visual information which they can see through your their eyes uh, as per the research three percent of school age children have this visual impairment uh, impairment are uh, 
you can see students in your classroom you know what difficulty in copying that information whatever you written on that board they are not able to uh, you know copy that information on their notebook and even they are struggling to tie shoe loose uh, shoe lace as well if you have seen that in movie as well the student the kid was struggling to even tie his uh, shoe lace and let's move ahead and see the other uh, disabilities then we have this attention deficit and hyperactive disorder so it is like a student uh, is not able to pay attention and they have this uh, difficulty in controlling the impulsive behavior they become instant about the, their emotion they're difficult to control their emotion uh, their emotions as per the research 9.6 percent of the school age children have uh, this uh, ATD, uh, ADHD and uh, you can see students in your classroom who are like lost in their own world they are daydreaming and even they are uh, sometimes they don't talk and sometimes they're talking excessively other student disability we can see is the language learning disorder as sir has said this uh, so it is difficulty in understanding expressing and processing that particular language uh, uh, as per the research, 6.6 percent uh, 6 of the students, uh, uh, school age students, have this communication uh, disorder. So you will see students in your class like they are troubling learning new words related to that language. Even whenever they are talking, they use a lot of filters. Like mm, uh, they are not able to uh, complete that sentence. Then another disability, uh, we have this auditory processing disorder. Uh, it is in difficulty in processing sounds and students are getting confused between the order of sounds and two sounds coming together. So as per the research, 3% of school age students have this AP, uh, APD. Uh, you can see students in your classroom, you know, getting confused between when the teacher is speaking and something, uh, some noise is coming from the background. And sometimes it takes time to answer the questions as well. You're asking something, they a lot of time to process that and then give the answer. The another uh, uh, disability we have this dysgraphia. So dysgraphia is a uh, students find it difficult to write and convert their thoughts into writing whenever you ask them to draw something. So as per the research, fourteen percent of school age may have uh, may suffer with this dysgraphia. And you can see students in your classroom, you know, uh, struggling to even holding a pencil. And even even though they are writing, they are inconsistent with this spacing because they are not understanding how to write this. So all these are uh, disabilities, uh, different disabilities you can find uh, in the students, and you can find other disabilities as well. Uh, other disabilities as well and these disabilities they uh, it can be temporary it can be reoccurring and it can be long in coming long run as well and even in one student can have more than one disabilities as well so even in that movie movie you have seen even that movie was mainly focusing on the dyslexia but that person uh, that kid was also uh, struggling to do the uh, uh, tie the shoelaces and catch the ball the kid was also suffering with this visual uh, deficit or uh, process deficit so now we have talked about the uh, types of dis uh, student disability which we can commonly see in our students let's move ahead and see now now we know students uh, students how we can create an inclusive classroom and before i talk about it i would like to know from all of you on that uh, do you have an inclusive classroom in your schools? And for that, I'm releasing a poll. I have released a poll. Uh, do you have inclusive uh, classrooms in your school? So uh, you can see 57% uh, people have said yes, they have inclusive classroom and 42% uh, have said they don't have uh, the inclusive classroom in school. So people who said it's, uh, they have inclusive classroom, it's very uh, good to hear you have already started uh, doing that and the people who doesn't have it, uh, maybe you haven't started focusing on that and let's move ahead and see how we can make more our class uh, if you have started already how we can make our classroom more inclusive and uh, if you haven't like let's see how we can create an inclusive classroom 
Okay, so you can create, uh, if you're creating an inclusive classroom, we can include, uh, we can have three, in the three steps. The first step is, it is very important, uh, it is very important to understand the student first through observation and test. Then have the inclusive strategy inside and outside the classroom. Then collaborate with the parents and community and make them also part of a uh, part of this and work together. Let's move ahead and see every step in the day. So first is to diagnose the students. So diagnose the students, it is very important to understand what a student is going through, uh, going through and what kind of disabilities and issue that a student is has. Then you, based on that, you can provide any supports. Even that in movie, you have uh, seen like Ami Khan started paying attention if a kid is behaving in different way, why the kid is behaving in different way. So as a teacher, it is very important for to recognize and identify these signs if a student is going through, why they are going through. So here are a few indicators which you can use uh, in your classroom during the, when you're observing the, uh, observing the kids. So you have this emotional avoidance. Uh, I will say, uh, I will pause for two minutes and I would like, uh, I request all of you just see, uh, go through these symptoms, what these symptoms are. Maybe you are also seeing the symptoms in your own classroom and uh, students are going through. So there are more uh, symptoms as well. I will pause for just uh, one minute here and you just, I would like everyone to just go through this symptom so you can relate more. Maybe you are also seeing these kind of students in your class. And you also get all these examples and three in your uh, handouts as well. So you will have whenever you want, you can refer that as well. So as these symptoms are you saying, uh, maybe you can have students who are avoidant, they are just continuous absent above, they are not coming to school. Another symptom you can see is they are missing the homework, they are feeling embarrassed and they are not finishing the homework. And even this time uh, troubles, they are like taking and you and whenever you're giving any time they are taking too much time to even finish that and whenever the any test is coming they're getting anxiety and getting stressed about it messy handwriting and they fail to do this number type of test in the classroom these are the parameters you can use uh, in your classroom if, and observe the child based on that let's uh, move ahead and see uh, another is once you started observing the kid, if you want, you can take an online offline t a test to, uh, based on your observation to identify to which kind of learning disability and issue is a uh, student is going uh, going through, which can help you to uh, understand more better, uh, betterly whatever you are think is, is correct or like how you can enhance your understanding in that. So for that, you can use this offline uh, material as well. So you have, we have few offline material from Russia's and the National Mental Handicap. Then we have uh, material, uh, you can use this online test as well. There are a lot of online tests you can use. There's this National Center for Learning Disability, Aptitude and Lay Exercise. Let's go through these uh, materials and see how we can use in your classrooms to uh, uh, take a test. Let me share my screen one more time. Okay, so first offline test, you can use this tool which is designed, uh, which is designed by the National, uh, National Institute for the Mental and Handicap. So what they have, the uh, what it has is they have different kind of uh, class-based subjects and, you know, if you want to, you know, one of the symptoms we are seeing also, you know, uh, supposed to have this ability and the what is skill the students had learned. You can use this test paper uh, to understand the students what they are going through. And they, it's, it's in different subjects, math, or different classes. Okay, let me show you. Uh, so here you can see for the English and for the grade one, you can use this test paper. It is automatic if you can ask them to, you know, have this as them to point the picture, uh, point the picture when and ask, which will help you to understand whatever the students is 
you know are they able to recognize these pictures or not it can help you to understand maybe their visual uh, processing or language uh, they do they have this visual processing disorder or not there are different kind of test you can uh, here you can have uh, the test you know it asking to be that is similar to a1 so it will help you to understand are they able to understand the instructions or not read these instruct instructions a and b are they like it can be again dyslexia are they able to understand the sounds of it so you can use uh, this for to test the students and based on that you can come to know what they are going to another you can use this brushes so uh, again this is a very elaborated uh, elaborated documents and it is for the screening check uh, disability screening and uh, it is developed by the ministry of education has a uh, okay so it has the uh, checklist and the you can uh, checklist for different uh, disability condition it has the physical and the intellectual and the special uh, disability learning disabilities as well which you can you can use this document as a reference to check what you are seeing in the classes it will give you some checkpoints what you are thinking the students is or it is similar uh, with the observations or not so let's see uh, one so uh, you can see this this visual impairment uh, impairment so they have given the definition then uh, they have given this first category if the person could be totally blind the second can be they are less there then they have given this limited of the vision of the field substance so they have given the definition as well and based on that you can check Uh, based on that you can come on this conclusion what the student is going through then you have the this speech and language disability again they have said if the uh, speech and uh, language disability what this means and what are the parameters uh, to check them so does the student speak in short and fragmented uh, phrases they have given the example which can help you to understand uh, like if they are going through this disabilities what kind of issues they are facing so you can use these two tools offline to observe your stu uh, students another you can also have this online test uh, online test which can help you to understand this learning disabilities so you have this lay exercise this has uh, like different kind of uh, parameters based on your observation you can check these parameters and it will come it will give you the result what the child is going through so i have taken this test and it will ask you what in grade the person is it will look like this then what they are going through language what you have recognized and how they are responding So it has all the checklist and everything. And once you done this test, it will also give you. You can see here. It will also give you the articles if and which can the resources which can help you to understand. Um, uh, which can help you to understand how you can support. Like if you want to take to the expert, so how what can the steps can look like? You can have the different. Uh, you have the different website. Uh, we have mentioned in the uh, in our handouts which you can use. okay so now we have uh, we have done with our first step we have diagnosed the student with different disability second step which comes is how we can make uh, this classroom inclusive and as a teacher we often uh, get confused and struggle it here like uh, because we don't are not, we are not very expert in this maybe we don't have a knowledge about it and this is the first time we are seeing a uh, kid and we don't know how to do that because we don't have the in depth knowledge in that particular area but even though we are not very expert we can make our classroom inclusive with by using some general strategies which can cater all the students even in that uh, movie tari zameen par you have seen even amir khan was said this to uh, his uh, teachers it's okay if you don't know how you can support that child but as a uh, teacher what you can do is create that environment the student can feel connected in their classroom and feel more confident and that that can motivate him to uh, improve himself so let's move ahead what general strategies you can use in your classroom so you can use this inclusive uh, 
inclusive language so language is very important plays a very important role so whenever we see any person who speak similar language we speak started getting connected with that person and feel more comfortable with that person and you can also as a teacher also use this language to make comfortable that student and make a part that student in your classroom so you can use different pronouns you can start uh, 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 call by by their name you can use this neutral words everyone everybody you can use this diverse texts which uh, talks about this uh, different uh, sexual orientation beliefs and etc even in that movie uh, that amit khan once he was taking his classes he has given a lot of examples uh, of of the scientists and the people who are also going through the similar th uh, things it will help that kid to connect more with that subject uh for example if you have a person uh, like in your classroom who has a dyslexia maybe they have a difficulty to processing thing instead of uh, whenever uh, maybe they will struggle to understand the joke so just speak with clarity and avoid this metaphors where they can you know struggle like if you are uh, using metaphor like you know uh, night all or something or yeah, get your act together instead just say in more simple way you know, be more organized and be more plan and similarly if you have a student like who cannot speak english and english is a second language so it is difficult for that person to understand these kind of metaphors so avoid using these kind of metaphors or tougher which a student can difficult to process another is to develop behavior plan so as a teacher uh, it is very important to curb down this stigma around uh, these disabilities and within the classroom not only with your student it is also important to curb down our own biases and our own understanding about it in developing behavior management can really help us uh, so can we what uh, make the student understand what behavior is acceptable and what behavior is not acceptable and how they can uh, interact with the people who have this different uh, disabilities and how they are struggling in their class the uh, classroom increases positive behavior in the classroom so you can set uh, rules uh, of, and promote this positive behavior should encourage uh, and praise the student when they are uh, showing this specific behavior for example a person who is helping a person who is struggling with the math just praise these things motivate these kinds of behavior, uh, behavior and uh, uh, these kind of behavior will encourage them to interact with the person does other students more uh, so like example you can also use this uh, different kind of signals instead of saying that so maybe you have a person uh, in your classroom who has this uh, auditory visual, uh, auditory process uh, disorder so they, if you are saying something they may be not able to understand you can use this different signals sit for sit down start uh, start working putting uh, away your material so they will feel more included and you can also as i said before start praise start praising them if you see someone is walk in the line uh, so just go and praise that person because for few people if a few people have from this adhd it's difficult for them to come uh, go in a line so encourage these kind of behaviors another uh, way to make our uh, classroom inclusive and love, use this technology use the technology so technology can be very helpful to make your classes engaging and interesting and everybody can be part of that and you can clear the concept even then you can have this individual learning by using this blended learning and you can use different kind of teaching aids and apps which can be helpful for you so here we have a few example which you can use so we have this each e part shall okay so e patshala is developed again by government and it has all the resources which you can use for your classroom and it has the resources to make your classroom more inclusive so here you can go you have this uh, uh, resources for student teachers educator if you want to communicate something you have the parents let's go to the teachers what you, what you can use so they have the e books teacher instruction learning outcome e resources curriculum resource uh, curriculum resources which you can use so let's go to the e resources 
so here you can see a uh, different uh, different kind of videos which you can use in your classroom they have different types audio video they have different language they have in different language as well they have in different uh, for the different different uh, medium as uh, for the classes as well let's see uh, for example here is the one video which is in hindi okay especially this uh, video uh, is especially talking about the autistic kids so if you're developing any behavior and want to create this awareness you can use these kind of things in your classroom and you can also use to understand how you can involve the kids who are suffering through this so maybe you're not uh, these videos maybe not audible to for you right now but we'll be sharing all these resources uh, in the handouts so you can go through this again uh, you have for the students as well you have they have the different kind of resources you can use this e comic book which is available in hindi english in book form you can use that book as well and they have this video, uh, video as well if you want to learn read out you can read out student can read themselves as well and you can show these videos as well. Okay, here you can see, right, the one, maybe you're not able to listen that video right now, maybe the uh, uh, video will be not audible to you, but this has a voice as well, and you can see uh, they are speaking in the sign language as well, if you have a student who is struggling with it, they can, you can also involve them through this. You can use this website and find a lot of, like, inclusive education resources here. Another, uh, we have this Learn with Rufus. Again, it's a website you can use. They have different apps which can, which mainly focusing on the feelings and making understand uh, students with different kind of emotions and behavior, feelings, emotion, numbers, and counting. You can use uh, from you can use these videos and everything from here. You can download uh, on like app Google Amazon Store. Another, also one more, we have this class Jodo. Again, you can use this especially to create this positive behavior management in your class, in your classroom. And it has for the teachers, parents, students, school leader. You can create your own community. It has the resources and everything which you can uh, use in your classroom. Here are a few examples uh, which you can, uh, these kind of technologies you can use in your classroom to make it more inclusive. Let's move ahead and see another strategy. So uh, we have uh, as an inclusive classroom when we have different kind of people with different kind of needs. So that is very important to have different kind of instruction based on their need. So when you can have this one-on-one -on -one instruction, if a person has a single disability, a person is one person who is suffering from dyslexia, this calculator, this graph here. So you, in that case, give the one-on-one -on -one instruction to that person. And if you have a stu uh, student, small two or three uh, students who are suffering from the same uh, kind of learning disability, so you can make this small group and give them instruction. Another one way, best way to give the instruction is peer-to-peer -to -peer tutoring. Uh, many uh, students, it's very easy for the students if the their classmate or their friend is telling them, so you can make pair up with any person uh, to the person to other person and uh, such as you can make a female student group lead you can make a group and make that female student group leader and like this you are also encouraging and doing this gender inclusion as well and another is you use you can use different kind of visual instructions uh, make use this charts graphs and put down this on the was make your classroom as much as a uh, rent uh, print read so it's will really easy for the students to go through with the verbal as well and they have the other medium to go through this visual as well so these kind of instructions you can use in your class based on their needs another outside the classroom uh, when we talk about the inclusive classroom it's not always like uh, it's not only about the focusing in the in, uh, inside the classroom you should also uh, also focus on the outside the classroom 
as well where can student come together and feel, um, feel a part of the school so you can have arranged different kind of activities events that can help to appeal different kind of students and they're able to access they're accessible to everyone here are a few examples which you can do in your class uh, in your schools uh, you can have different uh, functions where, uh, which can be like painting poetry speech competition based on their uh, uh, their ability they can participate in that you can take this nature walk you can take the class once a month or week just for the uh, just for the outside of the class and let them collect rock leaves and the flowers and whatever they can see around them it will help them to understand it more then you can have the extra clubs so uh, extra clubs it need not to be at the particular time whenever it's not need not to be in the school and any school time as well they can be a night club as well they can have the science night club at home everybody are in the same uh, in the same time in their home reading that particular subject or something and then you can have this a sports day like special olympics where you can have this race chess football you have seen in olympics they have different kind of games and from everybody who has disability or not they can also participate in that and similarly you can also conduct this in your schools as well uh, now we have seen uh, what general strategies we can use to make our classroom inclusive. Let's move ahead and see uh, our third step. Uh, third step is to collaborate with the parents. So before collaborating with parents, it is very important to communicate to the parents, uh, make them understand what they are their child is going through. Sometimes. Uh, a uh, uh, parent doesn't know what their child is going through and even though sometimes they are in the, even they know that they have the pro students is uh, their child is going through something facing some kind of show they are in this denial so maybe uh, uh, you you can also see in that movie uh, that is the main film once the moment amit khan got to know about it that the child is going through something uh, he communicated to parents and made them understand like what their child is going through. Even you had seen in that movie that father was in that denial, like this child is perfectly fine. So, but there are chances the student parents are in this denial. So, as a teacher, as an educator, it's very important to make them understand and students and uh, their child's need. So, how you can communicate? So, the moment you come to know, just inform the parent on time. And when you're informing them, just have this one-on-one -on -one conversation. Avoid having this conversation in public. Even, I say, even though you're calling for the during having this conversation in PTM as well, have this conversation in uh, in private uh, in private with them. Take them in more confidence. Then uh, you can share your observation and test result which you have observed in the classes, and it can help you to like based on your observation and test. It is saying that child has dyslexia. Similarly, when the Amit Khan was talking to the parents, they are also seeing what he has observed and why he is saying why he is saying that the child is going through something. So it will back up what you are trying what you are trying to understand, making them understand. And also involve them. When you are saying, just don't go and tell them, like, I think that. Also try to understand and ask them their own experiences. Maybe they also have observed that, but they haven't paid attention on that so far. So you can ask them, you can ask them, I have noticed something, child, stop responding in the class. And are you noticing same in the your home and when you are talking to them? And also provide some kind of resources, which is... Uh, related to disability and uh, which can help them to support to them you can show them uh, different kind of articles on this on this calculator or you can also uh, refer to them a counselor as well who can make them understand more and when you're sharing these kind of articles maybe sometimes parents won't understand by themselves it is very important to sit with them make them understand like what this is saying and how they can support it, why child is going through. And there's nothing wrong if child is going through something. It's okay. How we can support them and uh, how can support the child in that process. So we have also a few uh, resources which you can use uh, uh, when you are having a conversation with your uh, parents. So here is understanding the learning uh, difficulties, a practical guide for parents. So you can share them or also I would say uh, when you're sharing them, also sit with them and make them understand it is talking about the different kind of uh, 
disabilities it has focusing on the if a person is have a disability in, uh, in reading that is dyslexia and how it looks in primary classroom middle uh, primary school and secondary school it has a detailed uh, description of everything which can help uh, the parents who understand what their child is going through and how they can uh, support them So you can see different different intervention programs which they can use and it has a very uh, it has a chart which can help you to uh, make decision for parents so sometimes parents get can, when you're informing them they don't know what to do next so you can sit with them and help them to make this decision based on this parameter like once you know the child what you have done next if you want if you have the concern what you're trying to do so it can it has the whole chart which can help uh the parents to have this uh make this decision uh make the decision for the child so sit with the parent and make them understand about it uh another we have this uh short film on learning disability so we'll be sharing that short film and whatever the resources they have shown so far on the handout so you can go through when uh, these handouts. Uh, let's move ahead and see how once may we make them understand uh, how we can uh, make them communicate with them what their child is going through. To make this uh, classroom or school inclusive, part parents should be also with a part of this process. And it is uh, as a school, uh, as a school and as a teacher and educator, is important to involve them in the process uh, and make them aware about it, what their child is doing. And it is also help to uh, when you are working with the parents in the community, it is also help to remove this stigma around this this different end of uh, student disabilities. So how you can do uh, collaborate with parents? First, you can have this know each other. So many parents, when you're informing them, they will hesitate. They will start getting worried. Maybe their own, only ch their child is suffering with this. If they are knowing each other, they can help them to understand it's OK. Maybe other child is also going through this. And their family is also trying to figure it out. It will give more confidence and they will get more less worry about, uh, about it. So you can ask them, uh, for example, in the in the beginning of the year, uh, school year, you can ask them to get to know each other in through the phones, mail, and just first two weeks of the school. Another way to invite parents and make them part of the classroom and the process. Uh, you can encourage them to visit uh, the actual classroom when the kid isn't sitting in the classroom, how that kid is uh, participating and be the uh, as a part of that classroom. They can have this special visit during special event in classroom activities. And you can arrange this teacher parent teacher conference. Uh, here, uh, teach, uh, here you can arrange this conference and seminar to sensitize the community, uh, community about this different kind of uh, disabilities child is going through and remove the stigma. So uh, you can uh, arrange this awareness campaigns with different kind of NGOs who are working in this field. And you can invite a counselor and expert to talk to understand uh, know what child is going through and what kind of disabilities and how uh, how what are their challenges another uh, you can ask parents to volunteer in the school so what you can do is you can uh, gather the information about the student parents such as their hobbies their skills and what are the interest area they would like to volunteer so for example uh, through this uh, survey you have got to know someone is really like to read on different things so they can ask, come to the classroom and read to the classroom and they can help you to prepare material for an activity or whatever they are exporting they can take that class and that activity with the students another uh, like uh, you can add a parent section in the uh, in the school where the parents is uh, like feeling comfortable and they can visit and spend their time whenever they want uh, to spend it time with the uh, their kid so it you can create that space in the library and office uh, in office then another uh, creating that platform where they can share and you can take the feedback on the child what are uh, the strength and as well as the need of the child so 
for example uh, once you got their feedback you can start a game you got to know the students are struggling uh, with those maths or something so you can start this uh, uh, maths game night every quarter uh, to teach families you know how they can teach uh, this how they can be part of this match with the, uh, their students so there are different activities which you can use to collaborate with parents uh, here are a few ngos who work with uh, multiple disability if you want you can uh, get in touch with them uh, if you want to know more about that particular disability here, if they can also come and do this awareness campaigns with them. So we have this Muskan, then we have this Mind Group, then we have CBM India, and we have Amrit Foundation. You can contact from either phone numbers and email IDs, and we'll be sharing all these in the handouts as well. Okay, so now we have talked about uh, how we can create a class uh, classroom. Let's uh, try to understand through this uh, one case study how we can implement this in a classroom. So we have a, a student, um, Abhay is from the second grade and he has a difficulty in writing the alphabet sequentially, pronunciation, and when processing visual things, but he's good at painting. And the teachers, as observed, he has a low, uh, below grade level in phonetic awareness, uh, decoding, writing, and listening. And through all, and, and he comes from a family where the English is a second language. So his mother is very upset with his the test result he's getting, and he does, she doesn't want to come. He told him she won't come to the school. So. Teacher has observed, and these are the observation and test result is saying, uh, uh, like Abhay is getting confused uh, between e, e, uh, e, I, and Z words. Abhay can't read the CVC words back tab and can't spell, uh, but could spell this uh, same uh, while reading back several times to find come out which comes uh, uh, comes next and making errors when copying on the name uh, notebooks of copying this pattern and from the black. So now you have seen this uh, observation and test the teacher has done. Now I will look. I would like to know from all of you what do you think? What is uh, what this disorder is? So for that, I am releasing a poll. Uh, you can see that uh, poll on your screen. Let me share my screen again. So we have talked about uh, different kind of disabilities uh, so far, and based on that, what do you think? What kind of disabilities the, uh, the Abhay is going through? Based on these observations and calculations. Okay, we got the results. So mainly people have said this, uh, Abha is going through this visual motor deficit. Uh, uh, and 45% people have said, then another 54 people have said this visual processing disorder. Again, 45 people have said this dyslexia. Another 18% uh, has said auditory processing disorder. So uh, let's, uh, yes, who have said this visual motor deficit and language processing order, they are correct. Her is going through having this disorders. Let's move ahead. And so now I would like, now we have understood our Ajay Abhay is going through. What do you think? What kind of strategies as a teacher you can use uh, for Abhay? Uh, you can uh, share this in your q and a box if you want to sh speak you can raise your hand and speak as that what do you think based on this observation uh, we have seen uh, we know now that he is going through visual motor deficit and language processing disorder what kind of strategies we can use based on our discussions Okay, so now we got to know uh, Abhay is going through these two things. So as a teacher and with parents, what we can do is uh, because the Abhay is going through this visual processing, you can use this visual tools and technology. You can have this one-on-one -on -one instructions because Abhay is uh, uh, 
finding difficulty in processing the interpreting the language then you can encourage because he is good at painting so what you can do is like uh, for abhay is encourage him to participate in this uh, painting competition which boost him and motivate him to learn better then you can also some uh, help parents to do this homework with them and summarize reading materials and help them to understand how to uh, in take notes bit, uh, for better retention and if needed like uh, you can uh, um, inform them to uh, to like refer to a counselor as then well get a private tutor if the there is need for that so now we have uh, seen this case study let's summarize what we have talked so far so uh, we have uh, seen this inclusive education is for all children in the same classroom in the same schools then we have seen the benefits it can help if inclusive education help them to develop themselves and break down the discrimination and we have seen different types of uh, a student disability there are a few common disabilities like uh, uh, dyslexia visual motor deficit uh, language processing order auditory uh, processing order and dyslexia then we have uh, talked about how we can create as a teacher as a educator how we can create this inclusive classroom so first to identify the students through observation and different tests and we can uh, have this different types of strategies it which is uh, support them inside and outside the classroom and then we can inform the parents and involve uh, them in the part of the uh, child's development and learning process so if you have uh, any questions related what we have talked so far uh, please feel free to ask uh, as i said uh, in the beginning as well uh, this is just a first part of this uh, the topic and we just trying uh, we have just touched the surface of this topic uh, i know it will make more sense when we have expert with us and who, uh, the person is talking about all these uh, problem all these disabilities in detail if uh, so if you want to know uh, and if you want to know more about it and want to would like to have a session on that uh, we have added uh one question we have put up a one question in the feedback uh, session as well if you like to understand more about it if you think uh we can bring we should bring the expert on this who can talk in all these things on details as well so we can do that as well. have any question uh related to whatever we talked we can uh like um i will I'd love to answer this but well, maybe not a particular skill because as i said i'm not an expert so maybe uh, we are just trying to create awareness and having this understanding what inclusive classroom is so maybe i'm not able to give you answers related this uh, special uh, disabilities uh thank you Sh shashi ma'am i think you have replied uh, what kind of strategies you, we can use for that okay uh let's move ahead with our session uh, uh you can meanwhile you can ask uh, raise your hand and use q and a box if you have any questions so uh like we have uh talked uh, like in our strategies we have seen uh about talked about the visuals uh, visual instruction and the technologies uh, which you can use to make uh, your classroom more uh, inclusive and we have few uh, part academic partners lead and kian which have this uh, which can help you to make your classroom more engaging so lead is uh, like integrated innovative uh, teach based learning solution it has uh, the curriculum teaching methods books and all the materials which you can use in your class to make it more innovative and engaging through this technology and then we have a kian so it has a, it is a multimedia computer it has a data product projector tv tuner auto audio system and dvd player which you can use to make your classroom more visual and uh, visual and you can use for the visual instructions so if you would if you would like to know more about it uh you can write us on this hello at the red button on dot com and also you can contact us on this uh, phone number as well and with this uh, we are coming to the end of our session uh, again thank you all of you be the part of this session and make making this session more uh, 
fruitful for all.